Okay, can I have the roll call, please? Barbara Brenner? Here. Red Brown? Here. Barry Buchanan? Here. Sam Crawford? Here. Pete Kremen? Here. Ken Mann? Uh, here. Carl Weimer? Here. People will stand and join me in the flag salute. Just a few announcements. If you've got your cell phone with you, if you put it on silent or vibrate, that would be good. Also, if you're handing things out either at our public hearing or during the open session this evening, if you can make sure our clerk gets a copy, that also keeps the record clean. Um, we just came out of a committee of the whole meeting about a half an hour ago where we had a discussion about a training proposal for effective meeting for focus and productivity. I think somebody's trying to tell us something. Um, and uh, the, we're going to have that training in early February. We also did an annual reorganization of the Whatcom County Council where we uh, uh, chose new officers in committee assignments and we also uh, assigned people to Oh, a slew. It looks like about 25 different advisory committees. Uh, just so people know, I'm still sitting in the middle because I got it chosen as chairman for another year. Uh, vice chair this year will be Rudd Brown. Executive pro tem is Pete Kremen. Um, and chair of the Flood Control Zone District, I'll also be that because that makes it a lot easier up here when we're putting different hats on. Our committees this year are going to be finance and administrative services. will be uh, Rudd Brown, Barry Buchanan, and Sam Crawford. Uh, planning and development will be Rudd Brown, Ken Mann, and Barbara Brenner. Public Works will be Pete Kremen, Ken Mann, and Barbara Brenner. And Natural Resources will be Barry Buchanan, Sam Crawford, and Carl Weimer. So not much changed in the committee makeup. And uh, all of this will be posted, all the uh, assignments and stuff, in the next day or so on the council website. Um, so we're going to move right on to our Mr. Brown. Mr. Chair, if I just might. Um... The, uh, you mentioned the, uh, the training, and I think there's an opportunity for others to participate in that as well. Did you want to mention that? Sure. Um, the training, you may have it there in front of you, Mr. Brown. Uh, training is going to be on February 3rd. It's going to be on how to run meetings more efficiently. Um, we're going to offer that training first to council members and some of our key committees like the Planning Commission, the Charter Review Commission, and some of those groups. Maybe other people like the uh, Bellingham City Council, but there may be... Uh, uh, certainly an opportunity for anybody on our advisory committees. I think there's going to be 70 slots available for that training. So the word and invite will go out in the next day or so to all those co committee members, and we hope we get good participation so we can all run meetings more efficiently. All right. I'm going to, we have one public hearing this evening. We're going to move right into it. It's an, an ordinance approving a rezone request for five acres at the intersection of Slater Road and Elder Road from neighborhood commercial to rural general commercial. Um, I think we're going to have a brief staff report up sure. front. Very brief. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gary Davis, Whatcom County Planning. Uh, this is a request to rezone approximately five acres from neighborhood commercial to rural general commercial. Currently, the, it's at the northwest corner of uh, Elder and Slater. Currently, there are two parcels, and one parcel has a uh, convenience store on it and the other has a rental storage facility on it. Um, this, uh, this is located about five miles west of I-5 on Slater Road. And uh, this came to light because Planning Development Services had received a complaint about uh, used car sales being conducted on the site. Uh, staff contacted the owner. The owner opted to go for a, a rezone which would uh, change the zoning to RGC, which would allow used car sales. Uh, staff's uh, recommendation, well, first of all, it went to the Planning Commission. They held a public hearing. The Planning Commission ended up not making a recommendation because of a tie vote, so no formal recommendation came from the Planning Commission. Uh, staff's recommendation was that if the rezone is approved, that it be subject to a concomitant agreement that limits the new uses to the existing NC uses plus automobile sales and the existing service station and rental storage uh, uses. Uh, and that would re and it would also require county approval of a site plan 
that complies with all applicable county development regulations and installation of required improvements, uh, including but not limited to landscape materials. The uh, agreement uh, has been in, in flux. It's uh, received a copy this morning. Uh, there was some more changes going on at the uh, Planning and Development Committee meeting this afternoon, and I believe the most recent version has, uh, has been distributed to you. And um, so, and there were a couple of new changes to that. One was that there would be um, a limit of number of vehicles on the site. And uh, we wanted to kind of revisit that because the, the, one of the site plans shows about 30 spaces for the cars, and it's, it's a pretty tight area that's been outlined as the, as the uh, uh, lease. So we're, we're, uh, staff is, is uh, asking to uh, kind of look at that again and, and discuss what, what the proper number is, whether it's 30 or 40 or something in the middle. Um, and those, those changes are shown on this graphic here. It's hard to see, but they're in red. This, uh, under number two, permitted uses. Uh, this requires that the number of automobiles within the area not exceed 40. That's what I was just talking about. And then under prohibited uses, automobile service stations uh, would be a pr uh, uh, something that's allowed. In other words, it says um, uh, prohibited uses shall include all uses permitted in the RGC district except that the following shall be permitted. And so automobile service stations like exists now with the convenience store would be permitted except that automobile repair, body work, and painting, and fluid changes would be prohibited. I believe that uh, concludes staff's report unless there are questions. Mr. Mann. I, I didn't understand what you were saying about the 40 cars. Are you just just saying that, what, you're explaining what we sure. did today, or are you saying you want to revisit 40 again? Well, we want to make sure that that's, that's what the uh, council wants, because on the um, uh, latest site plan, detailed site plan, that the applicant showed to the committee today, uh, the one that the neighbor had signed, uh, it shows about 30 spaces within the area that's shown as the, as the lease area. The concomitant agreement has a map attached to it that has a, has a shape on it that says this is the auto sales lease area, and that's the area that it would be limited to. So, and the area, and that area on this map shows about 30 spaces. So um, that, that might be worth some discussion tonight. But uh, other than that, uh, staff and the applicant have, have uh, come to an agreement on this on this uh, concomitant agreement, and that uh, can be can be signed. So after the hearing, you want the council to come up with a num clear number for that, or discuss it with the applicant. They're here tonight. Okay, Ms. Brenner. I thought we came up with it at 35. Maybe I misunderstood. That's one of the reasons I wanted to bring it up. Make sure it's it's the number that that everybody thought okay. it was. Okay, sounds like it might be a short discussion. Anything else? Any other questions? Seeing none, I'm going to open the public hearing. All right. There's no one signed up, but anybody that wants to speak to this certainly can. You'll get three minutes if you can give us your name uh, when you come up, and you'll get a warning when you have 30 seconds left. Thank you, John Sitkin, 1500 Railroad Avenue, representing uh, Masad Bolos, one of the applicants here. I may need some help in bringing up some of the diagrams that you have you told me around the system here. Can you pull up? Uh, Don't right. have this one. That's fine. I can show that. But the other one. The, I have some areas on this one. Uh, and then the other one, too. Oh, yeah. We'll add that an one, extra right? three that seconds one. for the document retrieval. Huh? I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thank you. I. We'll want to go through this a little bit with you by way of background because I don't think we've had the full council at a meeting, although I know that various council members have been participating at different times at the committee meeting. Uh, the site right now does have a conditional use permit for commercial storage, and actually the layout that Mr. Jordan has for commercial storage, the storage buildings he can develop in phases. He still could do commercial storage in the non-residential use area and other areas on the site. What this proposal would be now is this area right here, in that square, 
would be the area of the used car lot and limited to that area. What Mr. We met with Mr. Doggart, who's been the only neighbor who's appeared in any of the hearing before and all the committee meetings until today. And at the last council committee meeting, I think we said we'd meet with him, and we did over the holidays. Uh, and we have a site plan we worked on that he signed. This area would be a non-residential use area. Uh, the reason being was that he was concerned with a one-acre type lot for residential use when everything outside of this Lambert and the exterior boundaries here is a Lambert is our 5 a so we didn't want that about density. He wasn't concerned about the, anything coming on to Slater if it wasn't coming on Elder is where he lived. Uh, the future residential use area was here, the area west of the Swale, and I can show you the site plan. Uh, quite frankly, the number of cars in this area was not discussed with Mr. Dogger. Uh, it was not, as he expressed his concern, what was coming on to Slater was what was coming out Elder. Uh, I spoke to him again last Friday night, and he told me he wouldn't be here and concurred again with what he signed here on the site plan. What he had on the site plan, we wrote on it, said no residential is another one. We, no residential in this area, residential west over here, joint access, and this was the car lot that he was would be in. The car lot, the layout that had been developed by J.P. Slagle did show 30 spaces there. That's the configuration that was on that site plan. The thinking is it could possibly be reconfigured a slightly different way for up to 40. My client would like to have 40. We said 30 to 40. That's the right number. We're open to discuss that with you. Hopeful it would be 30. The concomitant agreement is would establish the retain the existing zoning, but only allow these additional uses that are prescribed. And the concomitant 30 seconds, agreement please. also has a series of detailed steps that Mr. Bullos would have to take to implement the used car lot to confirm all the land use development standards are met and the enforcement of it, it can come back right to council to rescind if it's not being in compliance with in a timely fashion. Uh, this isn't a Lambert. The staff report went into all the details of consistency with the county policy, so this type of use here would be consistent with the underlying zoning and comprehensive plan policies. The only party we ever heard from uh, was Mr. Dogger. Uh, we did reach out to him and met with Time. him. And I think we resolved these issues. If you have questions on the concomitant agreement, we can go into that detail. All right. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, let's hear from the rest of the public first, and we might have you back up. Dave Uncle, Swatcom County. The rest of the public might be me. <clears throat> the evening of the original hearing, um, there were six commissioners present, which... Um, resulted in a motion to recommend, which failed three to three, and a motion not to recommend, which failed three to three. And, and uh, I thought that the commissioners who were opposed to the, to the, to the uh, proposal kind of let their um, opinions about um, the applicant, perhaps, or the type of business, or maybe perhaps Mr. Doggart's complaints, uh, sway their argument, and I thought that as a matter of law that it just seemed as though this relatively unobtrusive additional business on this site, when compared with the amount of traffic and noise and, and lights and whatnot that were associated with the, the fueling and, and many store business, um, made it a good fit. And so I told Mr. Bulos that I would speak in, in favor of the, the rezone, and this afternoon at the um, committee meeting, it sounded as though you had, um, <clears throat> you were positive about it. And so I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak on this rezone? Seeing no one, I'm going to close the public hearing. What's the wishes of the council? Mr. Mann. I will <clears throat> move. We approve the, um, this item, uh, Approve the rezone request and subject to this concomitant agreement as included in our purple packet, the second replacement. Um, I would like to resolve the number of cars issue, and I, I I remember in committee today I thought I thought we said 35, but I also remember a discussion of 30 to 40, and maybe 40 was put in here just as. 
you know, not to exceed number. Uh, I, I get it. I don't think there was anything shady going on. But if the drawing clearly only shows 30 spaces, you know, I, I, I worry that then we have some, you know, we have a, we open ourselves up with this, you know, a conflict in, in two different parts of our ordinance here. So I, I'd want to know from the applicant, Mr. Sitkin or somebody, um, how many cars can be parked on that little rectangle that we're contemplating? And I, I'm just looking as a non-engineer at the site plan. I could see a reconfiguration that could get possibly some more. I don't think it's going to be substantial more than 30. This is what J.P. Slagle had prepared as the site plan and a layout. I, I, this would not be attached to the concomitant agreement. What would be attached is this map here without the actual parking laid out. This okay. is what the, what the staff felt was more appropriate for the concomitant agreement. Mr. Kramen has a question. Thank, Thank you. Um, that was very observant, very kind of you to notice. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Mr. Chair. Sorry. Uh, I think my, my personal opinion on the, the number is a little more significant than just a number. Uh, I mean, w going from 30 to 40 is a 33% increase. And because of the, the nature of the, the area, the, I think the scale ought to be more minimal than larger and so I'd be willing to go you know to, to to include language that would that specify not to exceed 35 but I think 40 is a bit excessive for that particular that particular location especially when the original plan was for 30 and the the applicant at, at that particular time seemed to be okay with 30 I'm willing to to, to go uh, n not to exceed 35, but that's, I, I think that's a significant difference than 40. I mean, it's. Well, uh, I guess if, since it's my motion, I would, I would uh, accept that as a friendly amendment and move it forward at the 35 number, because that is what I remember from committee as well today. I see Mr. Sitkin up here again. I really haven't left, but <laughs> We are at the will of the council. We did ask for 40, but we're appreciative of okay. your consideration. Okay, so there's my motion and with the friendly amendment. I guess, can I speak to my sure. motion and then I'll be done? Uh, so in the beginning, I was very skeptical of approving this thing. I just didn't like the, the concept of legitimizing a business after the fact through a rezone. Um, but, you know, I didn't want to. I don't want to uh, ruin a, a good thing by adhering to some sort of principle that doesn't isn't necessarily relevant. What we're talking about here is a very very tiny change in use, and the neighbor and the folks who live nearby uh, have worked hard. The applicant has worked hard. The owner has worked very hard to to give us all the answers um, to questions we've asked to do studies, get work done, get maps drawn, and I think that uh, at, at this time we have good recourse. Should something go sideways with this, this property and they go outside the bounds of the concomitant agreement? So I'm, I'm going to support this and uh, vote for the rezone. Uh, as I said, I don't love doing it because the, the used cars were you know, there was a car sales lot there before when it wasn't appropriately zoned, but I, I also haven't seen evidence of any kind of intentional subversion of the law here. So I, I just think this is a good business, and the owner's been doing a really good job uh, getting us the information we need, and I'm going to support the rezone. Any other discussion? Ms. Brenner. Yeah, I actually was not going to support it because I don't want to give anyone the impression that all you have to do is ask for forgiveness. But I also was very impressed with the um, how far the applicant has gone and the fact that the person who was the most opposed to it actually worked something out with the applicant. I'm not saying this to encourage anybody to do this ever, ever again. But I do appreciate 
what happened, and um, I think it's been done in a really appropriate way. So this, to me, is a real exception to the rule, and I do support it. Any other discussion? I just want to point out, I think, from a parliament standpoint, we need to move the motion, and then you need to amend it to change the number, not make it as part of your motion. I thought he did as no. a friendly amendment. I think he well, took the friendly amendment as part of his motion. So. Okay. So what do I need to do? Move to amend my motion? You've already moved to adopt the ordinance, but now you want to amend Amendment this, the ordinance. Okay. The purple concomitant agreement. So I move to amend the, the purple different. concomitant agreement to, to say 35 cars instead of 40. Okay. All right. So we have the amendment in front of us. Any discussion? Ms. Brenner. Well, just for future. So if somebody proposes something and he takes it as a friendly amendment, we still have to do it over? He's it, The amendment that you're making to the concomitant agreement is completely separate from adoption of the ordinance. The ordinance, just to get it on the floor, he had to move to adopt that. But then if he wants to amend a part of it, he has to make that as a separate motion. Okay. All right. So we have the amendment in front of us to move the number to 35. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. That, uh, so that passes six to zero with one abstention. Now we have the full ordinance in front of us. Any other discussion? I guess we're ready for the roll call. Barbara Brenner? Yes. Red Brown? Abstain. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Sam Crawford? Yes. Pete Kremen? Yes. Ken Mann? Yes. Carl Weimer? Yes. So that passes 6-0 with one abstention. Thank you, council members, for your time, effort, and consideration. Thank you. All right, we're going to move into our open session. This is where anybody in the audience can come and talk to us about anything you want for three minutes. Uh, same, same rules apply that uh, uh, if you can give us your name, if it's anything more complicated than Smith & Jones, that's great. And you'll get a warning when you have 30 seconds left. Mr. Mr. Chair? Yep. And I don't know, I, I do know parliamentary procedure fairly well, but we're under Sturgis, but I think it, it's, it's usual or may be part of the, the the process that when there's an abstention, the individual that's abstaining from the vote has to explain why they were abstaining. Is that? Mm, I, I'm not aware of any obligation to mention why. And I don't know. I, I, I've heard people thing. offered that. No. Well, idea, I, I don't know that's the way it was in the legislature anyway. But so. Sometimes people offer that, but I don't believe – I could look it up real quick if you want me to. Uh, I, well, I just wanted – you know, we're trying to, to be um, a little more deliberate and a little more by the book, and I was just – at least the way I, it's ever been operated in the legislature where you all know that I served for quite a while – when a member abstained, they were required to explain why they were abstaining. Did they do For, they had to be on the record to explain why the abstention. Oh, I, did you find it? No, but maybe if we simply requested Mr. Brown to explain why he abstained, <laughs> he'd be willing to share that with us. Um, well, for the record, first off, I am fully supportive of a proper parliamentary procedure. I, I think the honourable member is incorrect, but I will explain nonetheless, is that um, my family and the Bullis family have had a close connection for quite a while, and I felt it was appropriate for me to recuse myself from the decision-making. That's good. All right. And we, and we'll look that up so we know the answer to that question in the well, future. Mr. Mr. Chair, even if it isn't, even if it isn't required under our, under our rules, Sturgis, I think it's good public policy so that the public knows why their elected representative and – and by the way, I'm not singling you out, Mr. Brown. Uh, I just think it's good public policy that when an ele a person who is elected to cast a, a, a vote and do doesn't cast a vote one way or the other and, and abstains, that the public should know, have some idea why that particular member 
decided to abstain. I think it's just good public policy for the record. But uh, if it's not required, uh, we don't have to. I just think it's good public policy. All right. Well, we'll, we'll check it out and see what the what Sturgis actually says, and we can ask our our parliamentarian on February 3rd also, and maybe we can decide to put it as our own rule if it's not required. If that's the will of the council. All right, on to open session. Good evening, Steve Harris, President of the Whatcom County Deputy Sheriff's Guild here in Whatcom County. Maybe you can just leave the room next time. <laughs> <laughs> One just needs to turn on a television set or read a paper to see the increased dangers to our men and women in uniform in this country today, whether that's in the military or in a law enforcement role. Uh, just last week, we had a Bellingham police officer who an individual thought it was necessary to try to kill him. Um, we've had deputies shot in the last month in the face doing a, a arrest, attempted arrest on, on subjects. And agencies around the country and here in Whatcom County have taken different tacks on how to address the problem. The Bellingham Police Department has um, plans on hiring additional staffing, additional police officers. They've adopted policies that um, have two officers responding to every call of service to go to. The Lummi Nation has adopted policies to actually to retain and recruit um, quality individuals to pay their officers the same amount as Bell and M Police Department's making. Here in Whatcom County, we've taken a different tact in that we're actually reducing the number of uniformed patrol officers on the road through cuts. Seems strange. The, uh, the reasoning behind it is too many of us are getting hurt during training or other things. Ms. Brenner was kind enough to speak up against that, and it's not the only time she's done so. While all of you have made commitments to support law enforcement, I believe each one of you does. For 2014, the members of law enforcement in Whatcom County have chosen to elect you, Ms. Brenner, 2014 Legislator of the Year. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Appreciate this. every one of your service. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Cynthia Sue Ripke Katsigowitz, and um, I live in Whatcom County. Um, I have a grandson who I said I was coming here tonight for. His name is Elijah Edward Olson, and he's seven. Um, I've been here many times, and I'm a little bit emotional now because my whole family is military, and my heart is quite saddened over France and New York City and um, Cascade weekly's last representation of our police officers, who I thanked the young lady outside for protecting me, really. She's the first line of defense. While well, I come in here to speak freely to you. But I'm here again because just like, and I'm going to show you this, you know, I don't belong to the Church of Scientology, but I do agree with them in asking, who's teaching 19 million children about drugs? They're specifically speaking to the ill effects of THC. I've been here before about that, but I'm specifically here asking you for tonight um, to help this officer. Um, my grandson went skiing on opening day, and... Um, you know, I really, it broke my heart because he got in my car and he said, Grandma, you didn't tell me that stuff really stinks. And I go, Elijah, what are you talking about, honey? Well, apparently, the, um, your paper is quite correct, which is the Mount Baker experience. Well, experience number three that you may experience on Mount Baker, nobody wants to talk about it, but this grandma does. And this grandma will stand for these teenagers probably until I leave this state. And it says here, nobody wants to talk about it, but we all know that there's backcountry burners out there. And so what they're suggesting is nothing except use your common sense. Well, it's no common sense to purport THC. Here underneath it, which is kind of schizophrenic, I'm a psych nurse, is all the places you can buy cannabis. Then we have on top of it, I already have a card that says grandmothers against dope drivers. So now I've added 
added grandmothers again, stone, stone skiers. I have from Mary, who has been wonderful at the Alcohol Council. You know, I find it interesting in Ferguson with a police officer, who I was a psych nurse at 3 o'clock. If you have someone psychotic coming at you and going to pummel your head after bullying, guess what THC can do? And this character shows a very large, large, um, I won't say person, a very large caricature of someone because they're psychotic. Psychosis causes rage running after someone. Where did you recently hear that happening? 30 seconds, so please. I'm here to tell you I have information after information. What I'm asking is to protect Mount Baker Highway is also, I've talked to the sheriff, please consider having preventatively up on that mountain, there's only one forest deputy, a uh, what would be called an officer up there, like we have in Linden, a codes enforcer with canine control. I'll leave you their information to peruse. I'm trying to prevent, which will inevitably happen, a death Time. or some harm. Thank you very much for your... Thank you, Barbara. Because with a mother's heart, I don't know what else to do. Thank you. Greg Brown, Whatcom County. I've got several quick items. Uh, 2014 344, which was the surface mining, which you guys discussed this afternoon, which we really didn't get a chance when you got to your regular committee meeting. The Natural Resources Committee today added additional conditions and regulation, will be adding con additional conditions and regulation to this, to this today during their committee meeting. And if they, in their introduction, and they bring it up, they'll probably add it to come. I believe that approving more regulations does nothing to solve this problem and just adds to it. Prior to additional regulation this time is just to feel good. I believe the council should move ahead with Councilman Crawford's recommendation, that was basically all of you agreed to, to proceed to develop the MRLs similar to Skagit County to include the overlay where resources occur and then let applicants pursue their efforts in those areas based on the permit system. Uh, this process will be irrelevant if the council is going to, the permit system becomes irrelevant if the council is going to require the same information prior to anybody working on their property, or in this, in this case, the application. The second item are two items which are 2015, 37, and 36. One's the Lake Whatcom Forest and Bacterial TMDL, and the other's the Phase Two Municipal Storm Water Funds, or better known as the National Pollutant Discharge System Phase Two. I object to both of these, as they are using flood zone money to fund pollution programs. I believe this to be inappropriate use of the funds approved to protect the county from flooding and to, and to support the county when it does flood. My last one regards uh, the Board of Commissions. Uh, tonight, I guess you are appointing members of the Commission and in regard to the Planning Commission, I recommend that you put Dave Uncles back on the, on the Commission. He has served there very well. I believe that's a two-term limit in those positions. I believe typically someone who has served in good stead for a term and has done well and chooses to return should have priority to return. He's done a good job. He's recently been chair. Uh, he has done very well to get information cleared up and explainable and understandable by those who attend, and I attend almost all those meetings. So I highly recommend that you leave him on the commission. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking of the commission. Gary Honkoop, Whatcom County. Good evening, council members. I, I, too, come to you for looking for support for a reappointment of Dave Uncles. Uh, Dave, has served <coughs> Dave, has, Dave has served Whatcom County very well over the last four years. And quite frankly, I, I don't know another planning commissioner that works as hard as he does. I mean, he, quite frank, he's puts a lot of time in beforehand. It's, it's very evident when he comes. He's very prepared. He meets uh, with staff before the meetings as a uh, chair. Uh, he serves well during the planning commission, very knowledgeable. 
But on top of that, he also spends a remarkable amount of time uh, meeting or attending other Whatcom County meetings and uh, taking that information back to the planning commission when it, you know that's relevant to the whatever we may have at hand. And um, you know, from that that my my standpoint, more than anything else, is that that service is hard to find. Yeah, for and the service to Whatcom County is is very very commendable. And I greatly appreciate it. I really do because he's very prepared and it keeps the meetings uh, moving well. The other side of that is his is, is encouragement of the public to attend and to speak and, and sharing the meeting in a way that gives the, the public a way to, to, to truly have a voice if they so, so chose to. And I think it's greatly appreciated. In the, um, you have a lot of appointments in front of you and, and uh, there's a number of, of positions that haven't been filled over the last couple rounds, and I am very surprised at the number of people I talked to that recently trying to encourage them to apply, and um, very surprised the, the negative response that I've been getting this last go around. Um, so to have somebody that's, in, in I, I'm, I'm calling it fatigue, I guess, more than anything else, just the overall fatigue of where things are and, and other Challenges and burdens in life. I mean, I, I was in Eugene today. That's where I had to go, you know, with my client today. So, you know, there's a lot that has to be done to keep things going. And, they, and the, I'm not seeing uh, people who want to come and serve and serve Whatcom County, let alone serve them well. So I really ask that for reappointment of Dave, and I really appreciate his efforts that he makes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dave Uncles, I'm here to speak on my own behalf. <clears throat> it is my view that the Whatcom County Planning Commission is the part of Whatcom County government that is closest to the citizens of Whatcom County, especially as it relates to matters of land use, an issue that is at the heart of the way that county government relates to its citizens. I think that property rights are among the most basic of rights and that among the most important, and among the most important, in a nation that has a government based on the rule of law, it is important to remember that the premise that in the United States and in Whatcom County, citizens are ruled by laws and not by men. Land use regulations have become so complex that to an ordinary citizen, they sometimes appear to be arbitrary and subject to whim. The current update process for the comprehensive plan may act to help this. As a planning commissioner, I've always endeavored to remember the principle, that principle, and I've always tried to give citizens who approach the commission to testify or speak in open session a fair, respectful hearing. During my first term, what drew those citizens to commission meetings was, of course, the series of petitions to the Growth Management Hearings Board concerning the comprehensive plan rural element, that is, rural growth, inconsistencies between the comp plan and Title 20, water quality considerations, and other issues. During that time, the Commission received a series of tsunamis of high-quality work from planners at Planning and Development Services, accompanied by detailed staff reports delivered to the Commission who did not always view the regulatory world in quite the same way that a professional planner might. I was careful to read and understand the materials in the packet to do whatever field work was suggested by packet contents and to participate productively in commission hearings and work sessions. My compliments to the planners and the members of the Whatcom County Council who then were blessed with having to deal with the commission's work product. <clears throat> the great majority of the commission's work product was well received by the council which then voted to pass an ordinance pretty much in line with the planning commission's recommendations. There were a couple of issues, of course, that didn't go so smoothly at the Council. But I was always ready to defend the Commission's work and to speak in support of it. Thirty the seconds, council. please. I want to say thanks for the opportunity to serve the citizens of Whatcom County and to ask for your vote to appoint me to a second term on the Whatcom County Planning Commission. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Good evening. 
My name is John Heisteck, and I applied for a position on your Whatcom County Flood, Flood Control Zone District Advisory Committee. And um, I am a small business owner, and I uh, live on the Abbott Road just south of Linden. And I have a vested interest in um, the river. And I have about, oh, I don't know, 1,500 feet of dike that I maintain and am interested in helping on that committee. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. I would just like to do a very simple request that you retain Dave Uncles on the Planning Commission. I don't think you can ask for a... Oh, I'm sorry. Karen Brown, citizen, Whatcom County. I don't think you can ask for a fair more knowledgeable man to be on that committee. Thank you. Thank you. Carol Perry, uh, citizen, Whatcom County. Uh, I didn't realize that there would be an opportunity to speak, but uh, hearing the other uh, people speak about Dave, I too uh, want to add uh, that I wish you could have been in the Planning Commission meetings this last year. Uh, they were amazing. There were so many people at several of them that every part of the floor was filled with chairs. Um, a lot of the people that came were very intimidated. They'd never done it before. They'd never come before. But Dave, um, uncles, made them feel very uh, welcome and conducted it in a very uh, professional way. Uh, there was uh, some sessions in the fall that were um, hard to handle. There was a commissioner who uh, didn't conduct himself very well, and Dave handled it very well professionally. Um, and even before he was chair, he always brought a lot of information he would read the uh, Department of Ecology manuals and things like that and bring real um, information that, that uh, um, really dealt with the subject. And so I think you have a, a very um, honorable, uh, good public uh, servant. Consider him again. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else this evening? Uh, good evening. I'm Christina McGinnis from Bellingham. Um, I, too, wanted to just speak for a minute. I had recently applied to volunteer on the County Planning Commission and just wanted to um, uh, reiterate what I had said in my application, that I would um, welcome the opportunity to serve the county in the capacity of some of the um, comp plan and land use decisions that will be occurring in the next couple of years as a volunteer who has a background um, in not only natural resources and environmental science, but also with a focus of water quality. There are so many water issues here in Whatcom County. I feel that my background would um, help complement the current uh, planning commissioners. And so I just wanted to express um, that I would really like to serve on the planning commission, and I would welcome the opportunity to serve. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Last chance. What was that last one's name again? Christina McGinnis. Do you, do you remember her, Sam? What? All right, I'm going to close the open session. We're going to move on to our regular business. The first thing is a request for approval for the county executive to enter into a contract between Whatcom County and Foster Pepper PPL, PLLC to provide legal services related to the Lake Whatcom Phosphorus and Bacterial TMDL in the amount of $50,000. What's All right. Ms. Brenner's moved approval. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 7-0. Next is a request approval for the county executive to enter into a contract between Whatcom County and Washington Department of Health 
for public health programs provided by the Health Department in the amount of $1,061,946. Move approval. Mr. Buchanan has moved approval. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Next, we're on to our annual county council appointments to fill vacancies on various boards, commissions, and committees. And Mr. Brown. So uh, in the interest of um, uh, moving this through efficiently, I would like to offer uh, to, to nominate, as we go through to nominate each of the uh, candidates for each of the positions in my role as the at-large position, at-large representative. All right, the first one on my list is the Board of Equalization. And I would like to nominate Sonia Merck. All right, so Sonia Merck, is, Merck has been nominated. Uh, any other nominations? She's the only one that applied. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. That Chair. Passes unanimously. Mr. Chair, I'd like to nominate Candace Wilson for the Community Network position. All right. One vacancy in community network, Candace Wilson, applied. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, next is the Lummi Island, and we had no applications for the Horticultural Pest and Disease Board. We had four vacancies and no one applied, so uh, that, that will remain open if anybody's interested in that one. Next is the Lummi Island Ferry Advisory Committee. We have three vacancies. Mr. Chair, I'd like to recommend or nominate Chris Colburn, Kel Kelvin Barton, and Charles Anholt. All right. And even though we have three vacancies, we're only allowed to appoint one off-island resident uh, for that. So we're going to have to go through uh, voting for that. Ms. Brenner. Um, I just want to say Chris has done an exceptional job. I've been to most of the meetings. And Kelvin's a great person, and he would really add to this. But I, you know, it takes one term on just about anything for someone to get up to speed and really understand the issues. And um, actually, Kelvin's a friend of mine, so I know him even better. But I would like to uh, recommend that we go with the incumbent and give someone a chance to fulfill um, a term with having more and better information. Um, and I hope that Kelvin will apply at some point in the future. Mr. Mr. Mann. I, I just wanted to, to take the opportunity to thank everyone that applied and point out, yes, there are still a lot of vacancies. This one really struck me because the incumbent is highly qualified and done a great job so far. And this other person who's applied, Mr. Barton, reading his resume, it was just incredible. I, I yeah. can't imagine any circumstance where I wouldn't vote for him, and, except the guy who's already there is doing a great job and is also very qualified. So. Um, it just I just found it funny that where we're struggling in a lot of these places to find any applicants, here we had two just outstanding applicants uh, for one one position. So I just want to encourage people to keep applying because you know we need your help. Any other discussion? Do you want to call the roll, or do you want me just to work through the names? Should we do these separate? Because yeah. he put, he said all of them, but they're all different. They're different. Oh, okay. Are you you still looking up whether we can only vote for one? I'm looking at the voting sheets, which is probably what you have. I'm just well, mm -hmm. we have Mr. Colburn and Mr. Barton in front of us, and we need to choose one of mm -hmm. those. So okay. I think that's the way the voting sheet set up. So I think it's correct. Do you want to call the names, or yes. do you want? Okay. okay. Carl Weimer. Uh, Colburn. Red Brown. Colburn. Ken Mann. Colburn. Sam Crawford. Colburn. Barbara Brenner. Colburn. Pete Kremen. Colburn. Barry Buchanan. Colburn. All right, so Mr. Colburn gets that in. As Mr. Mann said, Mr. Barton's resume looked like he ought to be running the ferry system or WTA or something. Maybe we could add a new so. position. He is terrific. Um. <clears throat> We're on to uh, Charles vote. Antalt, who is the other incumbent member of that and the only resident applicant. And has he been nominated? Yes. Okay. Any other discussion on Mr. Antalt? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
That passes unanimously. Noxious Weed Control Board. Mr. Chair, I'd like to nominate L. Allen Yoda. All right, so we have the nomination of the one applicant we received. There's still some vacancies in that, uh, the Noxious Weed Control Board, if anybody's interested. Any other discussion? No. Ms. Brenner. Just that he's in District 2 and the other openings are in um, District 3 and 5. Okay. If somebody wants What's to talk. Somebody. All right, all in favor of Mr. Yoder, say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. We had no applications for the Open Space Advisory Committee, so we're on to the Planning Commission. Uh, Mr. Mann. Uh, Mr. Chair, on this one, I would like to hold off uh, till our next meeting because I was not able to talk to Ms. Templeton. She had to, she's out of town or had an emergency or something, and um, I know the Planning Commission doesn't, the new commissioner wouldn't take over until February, so I, I'd just like to have a chance to talk to everybody. So I'd move that we extend the application deadline to the 20th and hold it in council for a vote on the 27th. All right, so that's the motion, and I'm going to look over at PDS and make sure that that's true, that holding off isn't going to affect the Planning Commission schedule. Okay. So Mr. Mann's uh, motion is to hold off on uh, appointing any planning commissioners this evening and leave the application open until the 20th. Just to the 20th and the vote would be the 27th. Okay. 10 a.m. on the 20th. Whatever, application. whatever the rules That's the way are. it works. Okay. okay. 10 a.m. on the 20th. Any discussion on the motion? All well, Ms. Brenner. I, I'm going to support the motion um, because I think whenever a council member needs more time, it's important. Um, it doesn't mean who I'm supporting. Yeah. Right. It doesn't mean who I'm supporting either. Yeah, okay. Right. I think a couple of council members tried to contact Ms. Templeton, and she was out of town on some kind of family emergency, so we're not able to chat with her at all. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 7-0, so we'll be revisiting that one on the 27th. Um, we're on to the Portage Bay Shellfish Protection District Advisory Committee. When Mr. Chair, I'd like to uh, nominate Wendy Shear. All right. Wendy Shear applied for that, and she's been nominated. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? I know Wendy. She'll do a great job there. Solid Waste Advisory Committee. We have three vacancies and two applicants. Can Mr. I make a motion on this one? I don't think yes, this Ms. is Brenner. not... You know, these are just places. They're not where you live in the They're county. Not districts, right? So yeah, and I want to nominate Mark Peterson and say he's doing a great job. So we're lucky. Don't, don't you know? Don't give him any clue that we don't need him because we really do. You want to no nominate the other gentleman too? Uh, no, there is no other gentleman. Yeah, there's Martin, Martin Colgis. Oh, Martin oh the same committee. I'm sorry. I thought he was in a different the recycling industry. Oh, I thought, well, they're two, yeah. They're, they're two different positions. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah I'll, I'll nominate both of them. And he does, Marty does a great job, too. I was waiting. We used to do these separate. and We're I, trying to be more efficient. It's all our lean Sometimes training, efficiency kind of doesn't give people the proper due. So, yeah, I'll nominate them both. They're, we've got a really good Solid Waste Advisory Committee. So All right. So we have the nominations. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? So Mr. Peterson and Mr. Kuljus, um both have been appointed. Um, Surface Mining Advisory Committee. We have nine vacancies and it looks like six applicants. Mr. Chair, I'd like to nominate the six applicants. They are all currently incumbents uh, from, from last year. Um, I don't know how much this group has been uh, meeting, but I know they do meet, and I think their work's going to get ramped up uh, going into the 2016 comp plan update, as we just uh, had some discussion about this topic today. So uh, the surface mining industry uh, members are Steve Cowden and Brad Davis. The citizen who lives in close, close proximity is Leslie Dempsey. The environmental consultant, uh, whom we all know, is Dan McShane. Uh, civil or geotechnical engineer with no direct or indirect financial business is Scott Holsey. 
and our hosts. And then uh, one representative of forestry uh, is Christopher Sechrist. And I put all those names in nomination. All right. So we have those nominations. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. And as Mr. Crawford said, we've got some plans for that committee. Oh, yeah. All right. Now we are on to annual appointments to fill vacancies on the Whatcom County Flood Control Zone District Advisory Committee and the Birch Bay Watershed and Aquatic Resources Management BB Warm Advisory Committee. We're doing this with our County Flood Control Zone District Board of Supervisors hats on. I've got different sheets here. And the first one up is the Flood Control Zone District Advisory Committee. And we have three vacancies for geographic areas. Should, let's do that one first. Mr. Chair, I nominate John Appel, Jeff DeJong, L. Allen Yoda, John Haystack, Scotty Hulse, and Brenda Chapin. All right, so we have the nominations. Ms. Brenner? Um, well, I'd like to see us support the two incumbents who are on there. And... I just want to point out, Scott's a great guy, but he just got appointed to another committee, so um, we might want to. Uh, I did appreciate, appreciate John coming up and talking to us, so I'm hoping we'll support them. All right, and I was thinking that some of the, that the terms for some of these were different than others, and but I, I thought so too. don't have that in front of me. Does anybody know that or have their packet open? It's open, but. The length of terms. I thought one of them oh, was a four-year um, term. Yeah, if you look, if you look actually just above it, this one is three vacancies representing geographical areas, four-year terms. The next one, if you look down, is two vacancies re representing special districts, one-year terms. So it's it's the type of position, not the. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's not on my vote sheet here. So the ones we're voting on now are four-year terms. Yeah, and there's a four-year term. And the next one's one-year term, then one-year term, and then six-year terms. Um, it, and I'm just going to comment that, yes, Mr. Hulse just did get appointed to the Mineral Advisory Committee, but I think it would be really good to have someone from the Birch BB Warm Committee on the Flood Control Zone District because they actually are a sub-district of the Flood Control Zone District, and they've never been represented on the, on the bigger advisory committee. So, uh, you know, he's applied for both geographic and um, for, for both categories, but... Uh, uh, I think it would be good if he got one of those positions. So that's my two cents worth. All right. Uh, I guess uh, we get three votes in this first category, and you can call names. Carl Weimer. Uh, Apple, Jajong, and Hulse. Red Brown. Apple, Jajong, and Hulse. Ken Mann. Heistek, Yoder, and um, Dijong. Sam Crawford. Apple, DeYoung, and Haystick. Barbara Brenner. Apple, DeYoung, and Haystick. Pete Kremen. Apple, DeYoung, and Haystick. Barry Buchanan. Apple, DeYoung, and Hulse. So it looks to me, if I'm counting right, that Mr. Apple, Mr. DeYoung, and Mr. Haystick. Is that what you got, too? Got appointed in that category. So welcome to the Flood Control Zone District. <clears throat> Should we get confirmation on how to say his name? Since Which we just had like seven the, different yeah. pronunciations of it. I'm sure he'll tell us. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next, we're going to look at the next category. And unfortunately, what I have in front of me, it has them both listed as geographic areas. So I don't know if that's what we're voting on or not. Mm. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. That was for second voting. Now we're mm -hmm. Flood Control Zone District Special Districts. Mm -hmm. right. One-year um, terms. Yes, one-year terms. And we have two vacancies and three applicants. Mr. Chair, I'll nominate Bronsma, Williams, and Hulse. All right. Any other discussion? I guess we're ready. Carl Weimer. Hulse. Good. Red Brown. So, sorry, it's two, two, it's oh, two, two vacancies. Hulse and Bronsma. Red Brown. Hulse and Bronsma. Ken Mann. Hulse and Bronsma. Sam Crawford. Bronsma and Williams. Barbara Brenner. Bronsma and Williams. 
Pete Kremen. Bronzeman Holtz. Barry Buchanan. Bronzeman Holtz. So it looks like Mr. Bronzeman and Mr. Holtz were appointed from the special districts. We're now on to. Oh, yep, I'm moving. I have voted. Advisory impacted cities. We have three vacancies, uh, two applicants. Mr. Chair, uh, for both impacted cities and six year uh, alternates, I'll nominate Bromley, Perry, and Sconeville. Okay. Any discussions on those nominations? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Now we're on to the Birch Bay Watershed and Aquatic Resource Management Advisory Committee. We have two vacancies and three applicants. Ms. Brenner. I'll nominate all of them and yeah. All right, and I'll just say that uh, Mr. Winterfield is an incumbent um, and the meetings I've attended out there, he's been doing a great job. Any other discussions? Ms. Brenner. Well, I'm gonna speak about Patrick Allisey too because he goes, I mean, Patrick's almost at every meeting of everything. <laughs> so I would love to see him on that committee. Any other discussion? I guess we're ready. Carl Weimer. Winterfield and Allisey. Red Brown. Winterfield and Allisey. Ken Mann. Winterfield and Allisey. Sam Crawford. Winterfield, Allisey. Barbara Brenner. Winterfield and Allisey. Pete Kremen. Winterfield and Allisey. Barry Buchanan. Winterfield and Allisey. All right, so Mr. Winterfield and Mr. Allisey have been appointed to BB Warm. Okay, that was the last of those. Now we're on to confirmation of county executive appointments to fill vacancies on various boards, commissions, and committees. Let me try and find, let, me, let us get to the page. Yeah, me too. Sure. Sec. Mr. Crawford. Can I nominate all of them at one time? You sure. certainly may. All right, I'd like to nominate Lisa Box for Ag Advisory Committee, Debbie Adelstein and Steve Oliver for the ADA Compliance Committee, Daniel Tepper for the Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee, Bill Bliss for the Boundary Review Board, Larry Steele, Elizabeth Benny, and Dan and Traxler for the Development Standards TAC, Sarah Catudio for the Developmental Disabilities Advisory Board, Mary Kay Robinson uh, for the Ethics Commission, Eleanor Hines, Lambert Rubash, uh, and Pete Granger for Marine Resource Committee, Bob Bondara for the Senior Services Board, and June Hahn for the County Library System Board of Trustees. All right, so we have those. Uh, Confirmations of nominations in front of us. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Those pass unanimously. Thanks to all the citizens who volunteered their time. Um, like I said, there's still openings in many of these committees, and those openings will stay open until someone applies. So encourage your friends to get on board. Well, let's see, where are we at? We're on to introduction items. Mr. Chair, I move we accept the introduction items uh, with the correction uh, for the uh, uh, item number three in the orange packet that were the changes discussed today at the meeting. All right, so we have three items for introduction, including the changed orange version. Mr. Brown. Uh, on the uh, MRL, um, I'd like to propose a change. I don't know whether you want to do it now. We can do it now. I don't know if, yeah. If it's easy enough, we can still get it introduced this evening. We just pass it down. So during the committee meeting, there was a discussion uh, about item 15, and we seem to struggle with the language, and I'd like to propose the following language, of which the county clerk has a copy, and I can read it when you're ready. If you're working off of the orange packet, it's page 7. It's the last attached page to the orange packet. So, Mr. Chair, the current ordinance, as it's, or draft ordinance as it's written, says the, on item 15, says the MRL designation in forestry zones can be no greater than 20 acres. Additional areas can be added only after previously mined areas are returned to sustainable forest resource condition 
and the total MRL designation remains no more than 20 acres. Unfortunately, as I read this, um, I think it, it, it would require a person to seek an MRL designation, seek a permit, do the, do the process, and then start the whole process all over again, uh, which is very time consuming and I think inefficient. And so I had proposed that this should read, a condition of any mineral extraction permit within the forestry zones shall include the condition that no greater than 20 acres can be mined within the permitted area at any one time. Additional areas may only be added after equal amount of previously mined acreage has been returned to sustainable, productive forest resource condition. Well, that's my proposal. Mr. Crawford. Uh, I assume that's a motion? Correct. I'll speak against the motion. Uh, the response of staff to this discussion was what can happen in a given area is the uh, a portion of the area was developed as a road. And that can't be restored because that road now needs to access as they work across the site. And therefore, the acreage to be restored is always some percentage less than the original acreage to be restored. And I don't see how this gets around that. You're saying an equal amount of previously mined acreage has been returned to sustainable, productive forest resource condition. And, and I thought I understood staff to say that's, that's not workable as far as how they normally, that it was always something less was returned because they needed access. The, the extreme example he gave was maybe they'd have to put a road through wetlands. That sounds a little extreme to me, but you know, on a given site, there is a portion that would not be restored. So, so I think this addresses two issues. One is, the, the first problem I had with this is it's the MRL designation, not the permitted area to mine. So, which are two, are two separate things. And we've been talking about, uh, uh, quite wide areas of MRL designation. Um, the second part is that my proposal doesn't require that the whole 20 acres is returned, it's just that if you wanted, for example, if you wanted to um, expand into another 10 acres, let's say you had 20 acres to start with and you wanted to expand into another 10 acres and you'd have to return, restore 10 acres of land before you could mine an additional 10 acres. So it would allow that, which I think addresses what you just said. And I'll just speak. I, I think, at least for the first issue about MRL designation versus the actual mining permit, I, I think this is much clearer than what we had before. I, I see our planning staff kind of nodding their heads one way or another. I was wondering if, if they had an opinion about the new language, but uh, I, I think I support it at this point. Mr. Kremen. Um well, first of all, and I appreciate the, the thought and the attention that, that Councilmember Brown is giving this and, and many other issues. Uh, you're very thorough and you work extremely hard and you are very dedicated. Uh, I really think, though, that for introduction, I think we're, we're, we're really – I don't know about out of order, but I think uh, we're moving too fast. We already had something for introduction. This kind of, of detail needs to be, I think, is more appropriately dealt with uh, further along the process. Having said all that, if the council's inclined to, to accept the recommended or suggested language change, uh, I, I think that it would be more clear and less verbose to delete the first three words, a condition of, and it would start with a capital A for any. Do you have some words of wisdom to shed to us here? I hope so. Uh, good evening, Council. Mark Personius with uh, PDS. Um, my, my comment is that this section in item 15 is in the uh, designation criteria section of the code. It's not in talking about permitting. It's talking about actually the over designating the overlay zone on the map. It's not talking about permitting. So you're changing. Oh, from the MRL designation. You're, you're now going we're, from we're talking about over to zoning altogether. Yeah, right. So All that right. would be my concern. I, I think he's correct. So if I, if I may, so 
And what, what triggered my concern with this was the fact that there was an MRL designation. And I, what I was afraid of is that someone who's doing everything they should be, doing, doing, doing a good job, has a limit of 20 acres, they can do the 20 acres, and then they have to stop, restore everything, and then start the whole MRL designation process all over again, which could take months or even longer. And that wouldn't necessarily be in the best interest of the county, yet alone the, yet alone the, uh, the mine operator. So that was what I was trying to address. I hear what you're saying, but do you, do you, have, a, do you have a way of addressing that concern that's a bit different? I, I, my, I guess my answer would be that that's a good, good question, a good concern to put back on the Surface Mining Advisory Committee and on staff. Mm -hmm. If we're going to look back at this, uh, at, at, the des at looking at alternatives to the des our current designation process, that's something we could certainly look at. Right. Ms. Brenner. Yeah, I, if, if um, Councilmember Brown has this concern, I think that is the place for it to go. I think as an introduction item and to start with, I like it the way it is. I mean, I don't know that I like it like it, but I want to start with that. All right, so you've made an amendment. Well, I, I, well I, I'm willing to withdraw the amendment if, I, if uh, staff can uh, perhaps come back with a response for that next, uh, before we mm -hmm. vote on this. It's going to be I, the committee. Yeah, I, would, uh, I, I was going to say that uh, based on the conversation we had at committee this morning uh, on this subject that staff's more than willing to, to re-engage the Surface Mining Advisory Committee and look at uh, alternatives to our designation process that, that Council talked about this morning. Now, in particular, looking at looking at what some of the other counties have done and exploring that a little bit, figuring out what that what that would take for us um, in terms of changing our, our designation criteria. We could also look at um, if we took our we could do just some some GIS analysis and take our existing criteria for designation and apply that to the new map of the potential resource areas and see what would be left over for potential designation after we'd gone through all that criteria and then that might be a good time to come back to the council and give you that information and then we can kind of see where we're at. Uh, it might be that there's not a lot left or it's mostly quarry rock and it's not aggregate or uh, or then talk about okay maybe we want to change some of the designation criteria uh, that would open up more of those yeah. and, and all I'm a range after, of options there. Yeah. And, and all I'm after is just a clear way that we can that if someone can operate efficiently within the rules on a con, on a continuous basis. Right I, I think in this case this these criteria are specifically applied to forestry designation designations within the forestry zone so it was a particular concern we talked about this morning about um, conversion of forest lands to to mining and I think the concern probably it sounds to me was originally is that well they didn't want to see huge mines up there without conversion back to forestry so yeah, I think we, that's we which I agree with yeah. address that in a couple of different ways yeah. all right so we we'll draw the motion for the time being. Okay, so the amendment is withdrawn, and I think we now have introduction of all three items in front of us. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Now I'm totally lost here. We're on to committee reports. I don't think we had any other committee meetings. Was there anything else in natural resources today? No, we, just in the MRL discussion. Okay. Anything else in planning? Just the elder rezone. All right. Uh, other items, anybody have any other items they want to bring up? Ms. Brenner. Well, I would like to give a real big um, applause for um, Sam Ryan, who's our Director of Planning and Development. She just received Citizen of the Year Award from the um, Whatcom County Association of Realtors, and she is one of the most amazing people who is able to bridge all kinds of issues with with constituents and we're very lucky to have her and I really appreciate the work she does so all right mr. Kremen. well as long as uh, council member Brenner was kind and thoughtful enough to to recognize Ms. Ryan uh, I'm gonna uh, dovetail on to what what you say because I, I was, when I was county executive, I was very fortunate to finally convince 
Sam to mm -hmm. take the job on a permanent basis, and it took some doing. I think I appointed her twice as an interim director, and then she would always uh, opt to fall back into a less stressful job. But I have to say that, uh, that she has done a stellar job. It's an, a very difficult job, and she has a, a rare and unique ability to to be positive uh, with a can-do attitude and approach, and I'm just very, very proud of her. And it's really heartwarming and touching to know that other people and other organizations in this community uh, know her value and are willing to uh, express it openly in public. All right. How about other items uh, from council members, council member updates? Let's just start down at that end. Well, this is not an update as much as a other item. Um, we had a, an excellent report on the uh, MRL um, uh, study done by Element, but I think we ended up with a lot of other additional questions that we wanted to have asked. So my, my, my comment just to the council is we, we need to address that and perhaps come back with a request to the uh, executive on that or whatever, the, what the, whatever you think the appropriate process is. Um, the second thing is at the end of last year we had changed to um, we changed the method in which we were approving the financing of different projects so I think it was a project based budget was the correct term and I think we were going as a council we were going to, to ensure that we were still maintaining the degree of transparency over those expenditures that we wanted so we need to put that on the agenda too going forward we already have for next introduction at the next meeting wasn't introduced this evening, but Ms. Brenner's been working on it. Oh, okay. To address and, that. and Council Member Weinberg. Well, you're ahead of me. Thank you. Children. With the two of us, I mean, it's really balanced. <laughs> That's right. it. Mr. Buchanan, anything? Nothing. Just want to thank our chair for stepping up to be chair again. I will appreciate the vote of confidence there. I also I attended the first meeting of the uh, Whatcom County Charter Review Commission last evening and watched them all get a sworn in and they're off to a good start and if there's citizens out there that have ideas on how county government could be changed especially along the lines of the charter they should talk to those folks Ms. Brenner Mr. Kremen Mr. Crawford well since you're about to say adjourn I'm going to disappoint you and and just go back for a second to um, what Mr. Brown said because I, I want a little clarification with staff um, I thought in response to my suggestion about maybe looking at mineral resource overlay as a kind of a different deal uh, similar to the way the counties to the south of us do it, that the staff had said um, that they would have to go back to the Surface Mining Advisory Committee and, and get their input on that. Wasn't that kind of... And I, but I don't know if, you know, probably where staff would like to be is some council direction on that. Um, do we want to wait until a few weeks from now after we vote on this uh, new edition of uh, environmental review at the time of MRL designation based on the current system, or do we want to now give some direction to staff? And, and you know, it may be a big enough item. I know you guys are trying to do the 2016 thing, and it was kind of in the context of, of doing it that way, but. Um, how soon would you need to know? Do you have the resources to take that on? Are you already taking it on as part of the rewrite, or is this the Surface Mining Advisory Committee taking it on? I, uh, you know, as we move forward with the changes on the current system, it almost makes it feel like, well, we're satisfied with that. Mm, um, well, okay, so, so I guess I'm just wondering, we're only a year away from, from 2016 comp plan update, is a complete re reset, basically, of what count Whatcom County did a number of years ago by designating basically only active operations and the immediate acreage therein uh, to have this incredibly <coughs> limited base of mineral resource land designation in accordance with the Growth Management Act. Uh, if we want to change that to, to identifying, as we said, maybe those per, per potential areas in a large-scale way and then address everything at the permitting end, um, how soon do you need that information or, or should we be even discussing it or is it already being discussed and you don't need any council input on it? So we're not at the moment at that, that uh, specific uh, 
proposal is not is not on our work program. Okay, we went through an update with of the element, including the designation criteria, with the committee, and that'll be going. We'll be releasing that. We anticipate in February, and then I'll start planning commission review probably in March. Um, we weren't so. That's the, the <laughs> short answer. Is now the discussion this morning and the discussion of the of changing that designation process, and because of the of the s supply and demand issues. Um, uh, is, is, is on the table, we would we'll welcome some guidance from the council on, on how to proceed with that. We can re-engage with the committee and staff can do that, but um, I can't guarantee that that will all be done um, in time for the 2016 update, but we can certainly make some efforts around that uh, towards that goal. Yeah, I think you heard some fairly unanimous discussions yeah. of wanting to move that direction. Mm -hmm. I guess the miners, my, I've lacked the clarity of how much work that is to, you know, put those diff different overlays on a map to see what's left once we've done it. Maybe we should, you know, have another discussion in natural resources trying to give more specific direction uh, soon because I we think, say, I think uh, there was lots yeah. of interest in yeah. moving that direction. And we, I can sit with staff and talk about that too internally and kind of get a, get a feel for what level of effort that would take. Yeah, let's, let's schedule for natural resources in the near future. Yeah. Ms. Brenner? Well, that, my understanding of what came out of natural resources is very different than what I'm thinking is this ordinance we're talking about is an interim ordinance until we get that done. The reason being is people are applying and we're not, it's going to take a while to get that kind of um, overlay or comprehensive plan amendments, whatever. And I, it makes it harder for, for people when they're doing it, you know, putting applications in and we're giving them no, um, no real clear understanding that this, to me, this is interim. And the final where we want to go was exactly what Council Member Crawford brought up today of the county uh, determining where mineral resources, the best places to define the overlay of mineral resource land and then do it that way, not, th again, this is interim. All right, and, and I, I think we're all saying the same thing. Just to be clear for anybody that's listening to this on TV tomorrow or something, what we introduced this evening was not introduced as an interim ordinance. It's an actual change to the code and to the comp plan uh, to the comp plan, but I think you're correct. As we look at the bigger picture, mm -hmm. um, we might change this uh, because of well, that bigger picture. We could make it much easier for MRLs to be designated. So, well, and uh, you know, it's not even easy or hard. It's 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 really just looking at what's resulted as the way we've regulated is a very uh, drawn out two step process. Uh, we may make. It tougher than ever to do it, but let's let's get the designation more driven by where we can identify where gravel is, good, mm -hmm. bad, or indifferent, whether or not it should be extracted there. Then have a, as I, the term I used today was a robust permitting process to then say, okay, now let the applicants come forward in those designated areas and look at every aspect of this, including environmental impacts, and go from there. Right. So can we get that in natural resources? Soon, Mr. Brown. Um, just one other, one other thing I'd like to add for uh, SMAC and planning to consider is, as, as I was watching. Did you use an acronym? SMAC. SMAC. Use an acronym. Surface Mining Advisory Committee. <laughs> Thank you for bringing me that, bringing me back into order. Um, sure, RB. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the um, <laughs> throwing me off my game now. Um, when we were looking at the chart, which is very informative, the, 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 the chart in terms of the life, the, um, the capacity to provide gravel under the existing mine designations based on a couple of different models for consumption. One of the ones that struck me, which we haven't really factored into this, is what could be the impact from, from Canadian consumption, because the city of Surrey, I think, is the fastest growing city in Canada. Um, and different factors, including what their own level of, of resource capacity is, could, could result in a sudden sucking sound of, of aggregate going north, which could have a significant impact on our reserves. So one of the things I'd just like to ask planning to do is see if they can get the studies out of the lower mainland and just get a sense as to where they are 
uh, and whether that poses an influence on what our end resources are going to be. Right. So it sounds like we need to have a fairly robust discussion in natural resources of what constraints we want to put on this. Ms. Brenner. Yeah, and maybe you said it, but I'd like to broaden it a little. I'd like to know how much is being imported and how much is being exported over the last, since 2004. We've got to have some of that stuff. Yeah, and we, we kind of discussed that this morning, that their current information that we get on the forms the county provides doesn't ask that information no. for that information. So, so that's another part of the discussion. Yeah, it's, a, it's whether we can require that. I think it's useful information whether we can require it. Right. All right. We'll have a good discussion then. Anything else for the good of the order? We're adjourned. Thank you.